Glory. <laughs> glory, glory, and glory. And glorious. Man, what a time we are having. Amen. I mean, it's happening. That song that we just sung, it's a new season. We're in a new season. Amen. I mean, it's a season. So you need to get ready. Everything must be under the blood, no matter what's going on. Everything, or you miss it. If it's not under the blood, you miss it. In Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3, is everybody there? Oh, I'm in Malachi. Glory to God. In verse 1, can everybody hear me? Amen. Let's speak it together, please. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, I want you to understand that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And right now, we are in that season, just like what you hear here. It is the, uh, the time of the spirit of Elijah. We are in that time right now. It will be the anointing of the spirit of Elijah that will be released very shortly. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. For this, for this he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path. Are we preparing a way for the Lord? Yes, because we are the voice that's crying out. Repent. Amen? Repent. Why? Because when people repent, the blood goes before the spirit. That's why he's saying right now, repent. Repent. We are in 40 days of repentance right now. Now, John himself was clothed in camel hair. And with a leather belt around his waist, and he was, and his food was um, not in honey, with almond milk. <laughs> then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around Jordan went out to him, and they were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were doing what? Confessing their sins. Repentance. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, Coming to his baptism, he said to them, Broad of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Do you understand this? He said, I'm warning you from the wrath to come. Because this is the season we are in. Because what's getting ready to happen, God is already releasing his judgment. There's already being judgment all over. You can see it through the hurricanes, the earthquakes, and everything else that's going all over the world. Why? Because what's going to come will eventually come wrath. Remember, God always starts with conviction. Amen? Then chastisement, then judgment, then wrath. So he's telling them, who told you about the wrath of God coming? So in this, <clears throat> he says to them, who warned you to flee from the wrath to, uh, that was going to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of what? Repent. Repentance. So you can repent but not turn. Do not think to say to yourselves, we have, we have Abraham as our father, for I say to you that God is able to rise, raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That means righteous fruit. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? Fire. And with fire. His winnowing fan is his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor. In other words, that's what's happening now. And gather his wheat. That means us. That means it's coming soon. Into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquestionable, unquestionable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. 
and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Powerful. Again, we are in the spirit of Elijah. Now, he's talking about the rapture here also. Does everybody understand that? Because in the spirit of Elijah, when the day of transfiguration, Jesus was there being transfigured, and Moses and Elijah showed up. Does everybody got it? And so Elijah means those who are alive here on the earth. Moses means those who have fallen asleep. So that's why we are in the spirit of Elijah right now. Because we are those who are alive right now. We are the ones that are crying out. We are in the season right now. Is everybody okay? And of course, we are of the spirit of Elijah, the voice that's crying out to repent because the kingdom of heaven is invading the earth in all darkness to prepare the way of the Lord's return for his people and release of the wrath of God at the rapture. Remember, the wrath of God is released at the rapture. Those that don't turn from sin will be left behind because they don't bear fruit of righteousness, but only fruits of unrighteousness. But only on the uncompromising, everyone say uncompromising. They are the ones who are protected from eternal separation from God and hell. Only the uncompromising. Now, we have gone through a full solar eclipse, and I'm going back to this again, which was passing over the whole center of the United States from west to east. It was a shadow of the beginning of the 40 days of repentance because it was like the Passover. It was symbolic. It was allowing the covering. Only those who are covered by the blood will be protected. Those that are not will not be protected. Amen? So in this, we are in a time of 40 days of repentance. Now, we know that that was from the time of the uh, Passover, that earthquake, in 40 days. We will be entering, um, we've already just passed the uh, uh, Feast of Trumpets, and then we'll be entering, in, within 10 days from there, uh, the Feast of Atonement, which is associated with the atoning of the blood of those who are repenting. In Revelation chapter 12, I mean, if you really look through this, what we just went over, you will see it's about the rapture, it's about the spirit of Elijah, it's about everything getting ready to happen, and we're in it. Glory. We are in a new season. Revelation 12. And verse 10. Revelation 12, 10. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath. Great what? Wrath. wrath. In other words, if he's coming down having great wrath, that means God is allowing him to fulfill the wrath of God. Because he knows that he has a what? He has a what? Short time. Now, September 23rd was the birthing of a new season. Um, and, and it's for the early and latter rain that's getting ready to come. It is of God's anointing. Is preparing, God's anointing is preparing to let loose following the 40 days of repentance. Things are getting ready to happen because repentance activates the blood of Christ. And again, the blood always goes before the spirit or the anointing. Now, the accuser is getting louder, getting louder and louder and louder. <laughs> He's accusing everything that God is doing, 
Everything he's attempting to do, he's accusing. You can hear it on the news. You can hear it all over the place, everywhere you go. You, I, I, the accuser. And, and what he's using is racism, bigotry. He's using fear. He's using hatred. Does everybody get it? He's using all kinds of things that he, in other words, that's his card right now. Everything. They're turning everything into all of these areas, accusing anything God is trying to do. All those exposing, or all those, I'm sorry, all those opposing the church, and believe it or not, President Trump, are blinded by evil influence. And they up and and approve what God disapproves of. They approve of what God disapproves of because they themselves are touching unclean things, keeping in the state of deception. And they will be left behind unless turned from rebellious approval. We see that the media, the Democratic Party, and not only that, some of even the uh, uh, other parties, look at what's going on right now. Even in the NFL, has everybody seen what's going on? Everybody's deciding to um, express themselves in the area of not being a patriot. I mean, that's all it is about. That's what this whole thing is about. It has got nothing to do with race or anything else. It's about honoring those who died for me and you in military. That's what this is about. And those are not, not, that are not willing to stand up for the flag, especially in the NFL, I mean, they carry the colors. Their logo is the color of our flag. Everything that was represented, that is the number one sport in this country that represents this country for freedom. I mean, come on, let's be real. It's a kid's game with big money. I mean, really. It's a kid's game with big money. That's what it is. it's all about. So you see that, that everything is being against uh, and with the NFL, the, the, the area of patriotic, the, the area of health care, budget, the wall, immigration, everything the accuser is just screaming out against anything and everything right now because he doesn't want God's approval. He doesn't want anything that God's approving of to happen. So everything is against, everything is against me and you. Amen? No patriotic respect to the U.S. flag and, and the kingdom of God. God established this country on Christianity. He established this country. You know, my wife and I were flying home, and uh, while we were flying home, there was a, a, a young girl that sat with us. And we began, I could tell she had an accent, and I, and I asked her where she from. She said she was from Israel. And, and, and she spoke broken English, you know, but she understood everything. And we began to talk and whatever, we began to share with her um, Christ and, and about how, what we knew, everything that we knew about the Jews and the feast, she was blown away. She had tears in her eyes. She, there was such a love connection between us. And she was 20 years old. And in Israel, people don't realize how patriotic they are. They love their country. Even the Arabs love that country that are, uh, that are patriots. They love it. They volunteer. Now, all Jews are mandatory to go into the military from the ages of 18. It is mandatory. The, day, the girls do two years and the guys do three years. I, you know, I remember when I was a young kid, I was, of course, they were sending us to Vietnam when they tried to draft everyone, you know, to go get killed. But now, uh, you know, I just, when, I, when she began to tell me about this, I thought, man, what a difference it would make in this country if they brought back the draft. If they brought back mandatory at 18, you go into the military for two years for girls and three years for guys. How mature. And then they helped them. They gave them benefits and everything else to help them get on with life. What a difference it would make in this country. I mean, it didn't make big difference in me, but it might make a big difference in somebody else. <laughs> Praise God. So we, <laughs> we see that there's no patriotic respect to the U.S. flag and the kingdom of God, just as Job. Was Job being accused? Amen. He was the accuser. 
I mean, he was being accused by the enemy. He was persecuted. So are we. But look what the end of what happened with Job. He got a what? Double portion. Does everybody understand what's happening? Doesn't the anointing bring the double? See, we're getting ready to kick into a double portion here soon. The double portion is coming with signs, wonders, blessings, and something else. Double exposure. Double exposure is coming too. It's still, we are still in the first whirlwind. That first whirlwind is peeling back everything to expose. But the second whirlwind that's coming is going to be releasing the blessings. Is everybody with me? Now, God is requiring the second whirlwind will bring blessings to the pure in heart. It will bring blessings to the pure in heart. Now, God is requiring something. He is requiring a higher standard now. Amen. He's requiring a what? A higher standard. So it's going to come by increase of knowledge, God's truth, humility, denying of ourselves, wisdom, understanding. And all of this is going to develop what we call a higher discernment. A higher discernment will bring a higher standard of character. Everyone say that with me. A higher discernment will bring a higher uh, uh, standard of character. So what is God requiring? A higher standard by increasing of the knowledge of God's truth? Humility. That's by denying yourself. Wisdom. Understanding. And what does this develop? Discernment. That's what it's about. Because people are not discerning enough. They're not discerning time, season. They're not discerning good and bad. They're not discerning what's righteousness. They're not discerning what's clean and unclean. They're not discerning. They're not discerning the tactics of the enemy. They're getting beaten up. And first, is everybody okay? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 3. A higher standard. So what we want to do is we want to reach this higher standard. For you, honey, it's called higher standard. First Corinthians chapter three. Yes. Higher standard. Reaching a higher standard. Let's go for it. First Corinthians chapter three. Glory in verse one. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you're still not able. For you are still carnal or natural. For where there are envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like who? Mere men. Mere men. Carnal, acting like mere men. This is called a lower standard. He was calling Christians lower standard. You're acting carnal. You need to get up to a higher standard. Uh, go to verse 18. What does he say? Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or, or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ's. 
and Christ is God's. I want to go back a chapter to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. Higher standard. It means we need more wisdom and knowledge, more understanding, more humbleness, more denial of self, so that a higher standard of discernment can be established, which will assist in a higher standard uh, of character of Christ. In verse 6, let's speak it. Is everybody there? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature. Mature, or they are of a higher standard. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things is called discernment. But he's talking about this wisdom that we need to establish this discernment. But the natural man, everyone say the natural man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Does everybody see it? Spiritually discerned. But he who is, spir who, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Those mature are, are not carnal. Amen? They're, those he's talking about are at a lower. They're, it doesn't mean that we're better than anyone. Does everybody understand that? But there's an area of more understanding. More discernment. Amen? So he's talking about that those who have more discernment are more mature. Those who have less discernment are not as mature. He calls them the natural man. They have not reached the higher level of discernment and, cannot, and can't live a higher standard of life in the Spirit either. Pleasing to God. Because they're still caught up on themselves. They're not able to see kingdom business. Everything is about me and not him. There may be a false arena there it may seem of a form of it's about him, but it really isn't. And 2 Corinthians 5. Second Corinthians 5, verse 16. Therefore, from now on, everyone say from now on. We regard no one according to the flesh, who is carnal. Amen? Even though we have known Christ... According to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses, to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. No longer regard those that are carnal. 
No longer, in other words, don't believe them and don't take them for their true word because they don't have one. They don't have one. Does everybody understand that? No longer regard those who are carnal. Don't believe or take them for their word because they are double-minded and unstable. They are reactors and not responders. We are to live in heavenly places. Does everybody get it? With even spiritual con conversations, spiritual associations pertaining to the th kingdom of God. People with pure heart, you want to be with those people. Amen? You don't want to hang around with carnal people because you're just going to become carnal like they are. Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. So in this, we want to maintain a higher standard of life in Christ Jesus. He has it for us. He says he's come to bring us life and love abundantly. Well, there are many believers who are not accepting it or living it because they're still carnal. You know why? Because they're still touching unclean things that's opening up permanent doors to the enemy because they're not, they may repent for it, but they're not turning from it. And until you turn from them, that door will stay open no matter how much repentance you do. Somebody got it? Psalm 18. Higher standard. We're in a new season. It requires a higher standard. Oh, yes. I'm going to go to verse 20 for a second. Psalm 18, verse 20. Now, let me ask you a question. Would this higher standard promote more fruits of righteousness? Yes. And verse 20 says, the Lord rewarded me according to my what? Righteousness. Some people wonder why they're not advancing. Well, there it is. Because you're not producing righteousness. According to the what? Cleanness of my what? Hands. Whoa. Whoa. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put them away from his statutes from me. In other words, he didn't ignore them. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the what? Cleanliness, cleanliness of my hands in his, in his sight. Wow, let's keep going. With the merciful, you will show merciful. You will show yourself merciful. With the blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but bring down the haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against the troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. And as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who what? Trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except for our God? It is God who what? Arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on the high places. Hello? He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend the bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. Now, here was something he did. Verse 37, I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? destroyed that's the difference between a carnal christian and one who's a warrior because he don't quit until that enemy is destroyed amen this is higher this is a higher standard of life in christ jesus he just explained it 
Proverbs 3. So Proverbs 3, please. Glory to God. And verse 5. What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and stop leaning on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Don't be wise in your own eyes, homie. Fear the Lord and depart from what? Fear the Lord and depart from what? See, where a person doesn't depart from evil, there is no fear. That means he's not li that person is not living a higher standard of life in Christ Jesus. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions, with your first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, don't despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. The fear of the Lord is also known as the beginning of wisdom. Now we talked that we're going to need to increase more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in humility, humbleness. It says, fear the Lord and depart, but the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 6. Higher standard. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. uncompromising, going the extra mile, making sure the kingdom is first. It's time to leave the standard level that we've been on and go to a higher one. In verse 1, therefore, leaving the what? Discussion, leaving, hello? Leaving discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go what? Go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism, of the laying on of hands, or resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. In other words, he's saying we're it's time to, we need to leave that standard level and move up to a higher standard of life in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3. Now, if you think that the enemy isn't going to resist you, you're deceived. <laughs> He's going to resist you big time. He's going to do everything he can to prevent you from advancing, from going to a higher level. He, you will have trials. Things are going to come across your path. But trials are challenges. Amen? The enemy will challenge you. In every way he can. See, one of the ways he challenges you, especially the number one thing, is emotionally. The number one way he challenges you is emotionally. The second way he challenges you financially. Amen? One of the things the enemy wants to do is get you in a disappointed state if he can get you in a disappointed state, you have oppression. 
How can we be disappointed in God? He's faithful. As long as you're in position, everything's going to be added onto you, and all things are going to work to the good. If you're not in position, then it ain't going to happen. So you just got to get your butt back in position and get things right. Fight and get everything out that you're supposed to get out and go forward. Don't look back. Just go forward. Hallelujah. Philippians 3, 7, please. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for what? Christ. Verse 8. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, but I do what? I press on. I don't look back. I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended one, but one thing I do, forgetting. Everyone say forget. Amen. Forget. Okay, so you blew it. Forget it. Move on. Forgetting those things which are behind. That's a powerful scripture. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us who are as many as are what? Mature. Mature that means what? Higher level. Discerning. Have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on what? Earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. Yes, we are to press on to the higher standard. Now listen, there's going to be something that it's going to take. It's going to take two things. Endurance and faith. Faith. Everyone say, faith, faith. is the currency, the currency of heaven. Okay. You can't buy nothing without faith. Faith, faith. is the currency, the currency of heaven. Okay. That's for how everything is released. You can't buy nothing without faith. Amen? Amen. Your sorrows, your tears are acknowledged, but you can't buy nothing with them. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Your disappointments, your woes is me. You can't buy nothing in heaven without faith. That's how you purchase everything. Amen? Is everybody okay? Amen. So we need to constantly increase our faith, right? Uh -huh. And how do you increase your faith the quickest way? Tongues! Amen. You pray in tongues, man! See, when you speak in your normal language, it's the speed of sound. When you pray in tongues, it's the speed of light. Amen. Oh, you want things done? Pray in tongues. Amen. Oh, yes. Matthew 16. Oh, tarabekirabakas. Well, I don't have that gift. Who told you that? If you asked for it, you got it. Matthew 
Matthew 16 and verse 1. Is everybody okay? Amen. Are you ready for this new season? Amen. Are you going to fight for this new season? Higher, higher standard of living in Christ Jesus. It's going to take discernment, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, testing him, asking that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, when it's evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. So does God require us to discern the signs of the times? Yes. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and did what? And he departed. <laughs> the carnal man can't relate to the times and signs and seasons right now that's happening. They can't relate to according to the things of the Spirit. These are eternal signs. Has everybody got it? And these are eternal warnings that are being released. They don't get it. And unless they do eventually get it, they'll be caught up in it. That's why it's our responsibility to be the voice that is in the wilderness to share with everyone. In Psalm 15, and I'm going to close here, are you ready? Psalm 15. Higher standard brought by a higher state of discernment. A higher standard is brought by what? A higher state of discernment. In verse 1, there are 13 things I want to talk about in this verse. <laughs> I mean, it is Psalm. Psalm 15, verse 1, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy place, how many, a holy hill. How many of y'all need, no, you need to dwell in God's presence? He who what? Walks uprightly. Wow. So we see the first thing in verse 1. It means abide. Abide in his presence. Abide in his word. Abide in fellowship. Abide. The second, in, in verse 2, he says, He who walks what? Uprightly, which means uncompromising. That's the second thing. Abide is number one. Number two is uncompromising. Who works righteousness. That means works that are approved by God. And speaks the truth in his heart. In other words, that person examines himself. Examines the area where he's lying to himself. Because if you can't be truthful with yourself, you're certainly going to be truthful with God. Amen? Who speaks the truth in his heart. In other words, he keeps a self-examination. Verse 3. He who does not backbite with his tongue. In other words, he maintains control of his tongue. Nor, nor does evil to his what? Neighbor. In other words, he's faithful. Uh, wait a minute, that was six. Uh, disapproves. Uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. Maintains control of his tongue. 
He does not backbite with his neighbor, nor does evil to his neighbor. I mean, he does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil with his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his what? Friend. In other words, he's faithful. And whose eyes a vile person is what? Despise. He disapproves all evil. Disapproves all evil. And any person that practices it. But he honors those who fear the Lord. That's cool. In other words, he hates evil and those who approve of evil. But he honors those that have reverence, honor, and respect to the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Wow. In other words, he will not change. He won't go to a lower standard. He maintains a higher standard. He does not put out his money at usury. In other words, he is a good steward. He uses money properly. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He doesn't allow money to use him. Is everybody with me? And he who does these things shall never be moved. He will maintain a higher standard of life in Christ Jesus with great rewards. When in this place and position, God fights for you. I'm going to say that again. In this place of position, God will fight for you. This is where the word becomes true. No weapon formed against you shall prosper because you can say it. You can say it now. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You can actually say it now. Why? Because you're living a higher standard life in Christ Jesus. Does everybody get this? This is required for the season that we are entering. Because this season that we are entering is going to start to bring the early and the latter rain. We will be beginning to see double portions of things beginning to happen, of course. And there will be double exposure. So that God's children can get right. And so we can get positioned. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask in Jesus' mighty name that the seed be protected by the blood of the lamb and the grow and bear fruit, that you constantly reminded, reminding us of this higher standard that you are requiring of us in this season so we don't miss it. Don't miss it. We don't want to miss it, Lord. Slap us in the head, kick us in the butt, Step on our feet. Do whatever you got to do. Cause us not to miss it. And, and convict us. Help us to search for conviction. So we don't touch those things or agree with those things that are displeasing to you. But that we will agree with everything that's pleasing to you. Granting us more wisdom, knowledge, understanding, humility. So that we can get to a higher level of discernment. And live a higher level standard of life in Christ Jesus with favors and blessing in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.